we are going to have a talk now about crate training. Um, crate training is something that I do get asked about on and off um, from people, mostly people with puppies, but people that are have got dogs, have had dogs for a while, getting new dogs in. Uh, crate training um, can be useful for any age dog, any breed of dog, and for so many different reasons. So what I thought I'd go through today is, <laughs> can I stretch Ivy, um, is um, is looking at a few different areas of crate training, um, why, why we use crates, what are they for, the different types of crates that are around, that have the benefits, uh, the pros and the cons, how to get it started and get set up, and then how to start off crate training your dog. Um, don't you peck in you. Um, we use crates in this household quite a lot. The dogs have crates in every room. Um, Merlin has one actually under the table. I don't think it's caught on the video here. Um, and he pops himself in there every now and then, don't you, for a little nap. Oh. We use them um, when Ripley's in season and we also use them for the, uh, the chickens and the ducks when they're in for a rest. So Ivy's in with us at the moment because she's uh, she was getting picked on really badly by pretty much all of the other um, hens to the point where she wasn't coming out and eating so um, she was just standing inside the coop with her face against the wall trying not to draw attention she a lot of her feathers had gone she was bleeding so you've come in for a bit of R&R &R, haven't you darling and now you're uh, getting very confident isn't she hey she's picking on you so we're using one of the dog crates to give her somewhere to uh, to sleep at night basically and have somewhere to go so with crate training um, why why do we crate train what are the reasons? So I've already mentioned that I do use them. Um, I crate train my dogs when they first come to me and my breeders that I use, um, both of them um, have used crates already with the puppies. They use them with their older dogs. Um, so they're not a brand new thing for the dogs when they come to me. But obviously my crates might be different. The setup will look different. <laughs> if you can hear snoring, it's Ripley snoring behind me. Um, so... I introduce them to them and we can use them then. We, we have crates and puppy pens and I use them all. Um, it means that the new puppy has somewhere to go for when they're getting tired and that helps them to not go into the habit of trying to fight the tiredness and going into play biting and jumping up and things like that. So it gives them somewhere to go to get into a routine that when I feel tired, actually I go and have a nap. And it doesn't take them long, maybe a week before they start feeling tired and actually take themselves you can they take themselves off into their pen or their crate on their own to have a nap popping a puppy in there can mean that your existing dogs get a bit of a break from them because they don't always want to play 24 7 with a new dog so it just means that they can see that the puppy is away and your other dogs can or other pets can have moments of peace knowing that the other dog the puppy can't reach them so it's quite nice for a bit of time out it's something that I use uh, twice a year while Ripley's in season. Ripley obviously is entire, that's why she has seasons. Merlin is entire as well. And I don't want unwanted pregnancies from Ripley. I don't want her harassed constantly by Merlin. Um, so for those couple of weeks, two or three weeks, twice a year, we use the crates a lot more. So I said, we already have them in different rooms anyway. We utilize them and baby gates a lot more. They're used to their crates, they like their crates, so it's not seen as a punishment. And it just means, for example, now, um, if Ripley was in season now, one of them, she's asleep, so probably Ripley, would be in the crate with the door shut, and then the other one would be out, and I could use them for demonstrations, and then I'd swap them over. So it may be an hour, a couple of hours, I'd then let one out to the garden to go to the loo, they come back in, I swap them over, the other dog goes to the loo, and then stays out of the crate for a couple of hours, while the other dog is in there for a while. So we can swap and change. Um, if your dog is crate trained and used to going into a crate and finding it somewhere nice and safe as a den, it means if your dog ever needs to go to the vets and stay in there, so whether it's for a whole day because they're having an operation or they're really unwell and they've got to stay in the vets for a period of time, they're not going to be freaked out by suddenly being stuck in a crate if they're not used to it. They'll actually realise, okay, this is a crate, it's fine, I'm enclosed, I'm safe, I can hear other dogs, but no, I know that this is a safe space and they won't be as stressed as if they've never been in one before and they don't understand what it means. It means if you go away with your dogs anywhere, you actually have a home from home. So when we go away with our dogs, although we tend to go in the caravan, so they obviously know where they are, we take the crates as well because it gives them somewhere to go if they want to get in there. When I go to dog shows, when I run training at shows, whether I'm competing at shows, whatever it might be, I always have at least one crate with me and it gives me somewhere that my dogs can go to have a rest during the day 
um, it means I can cover it over and keep the sun off them, I can cover it over to stop them getting cold if it's breezy, um, you know, it's just something that they're familiar with that I can take anywhere that I want to go. Um, they can be really useful for helping with behaviours, so helping with um, preventing separation anxiety or helping dogs that have separation anxiety. Can sometimes help with toilet training. Um, like I say, it helps with puppies to uh, prevent them getting into the habit of play biting or, or fighting getting tired, so it gives them a bit of time out. Um, it can be really useful for dogs that can't be fed near each other. You can feed them in different places. It's, they can just be so handy. Um, and if you travel with your dog, then having a crate in the car can actually be a really, really safe way of travelling in case you get into an accident. Um, a real good solid crate in the car or van or whatever you're driving can actually be the difference between your dog being injured or flung from the car um, or actually nice and safe and enclosed if an accident was to happen. Again, I have a crate in the van all the time. Uh, don't always have the dogs in it, admittedly, but they always have the option of going in there. I don't know what you're doing, Ivy. Um, Merlin's getting in the crate and Ivy's watching him. Um, so, so there's a few reasons why we crate train. Um, not, good boy, not everyone uh, likes the idea of crate training. A lot of the time when people don't like the idea, they call them cages rather than crates. Um, and... If you're viewing it as it being a crate, a cage, then you're, you're going to think of it a little bit differently. When you think of it as a crate, it doesn't make it seem quite such a punishment. So with crates and crate training, the idea is that they are a nice space for the dogs. It's their den. It's not supposed to be treated as a punishment. You're not supposed to use crates ideally as that's it. You've done something wrong. <laughs> Let me shove you in the crate. You know, you're going to go in there and, and think about what you've done. It actually is more of a, okay, well, let's give you a little bit of space. There you go. Um, good boy. Ivy, just leave him to it. Um, yes, you're going to do some stuff in a minute. Merlin, can you stop eating Ivy's food? Bear with me one second. Leave her food alone. Thank you. No, Merlin. I don't care. Right, Ivy, get in there, please. Oh, I'm just going to shut the door because I don't want you all eating each other's food. It's getting silly now. Um, he says, well, it's only fair, she nicked Ripley's tomatoes off her bowl this morning. Um, so Merlin's trying to eat Ivy's food, which is brilliant. So I've shut the crate. There you go. Problem sorted. Um, so, yep. Yeah, so people that don't always like crates are viewing them in a different way. Um, they perhaps see them as, as cruel because, you know, the dog's stuck in the crate and got, or the cage and can't go out anywhere. Um, but if you consider if your dog is likely to um, chew things and then become unwell because they've bitten through electric cable or they've eaten a load of things that, that's going to make them really uncomfortable stomach wise um, or something that could be toxic to them um, and you're going to be out for a couple of hours and let's face it most dogs will be sleeping while you're out um, you want them or should be sleeping if you can pop them in a crate or a puppy pen then you're reducing that risk of them actually being able to bite something or ingest something that's going to make them really ill so it's actually then for the protection of the puppy or the dog rather than it being a cruel aspect um, so, so yeah, so sometimes um, it's misunderstood as to how they're used and what they're meant for. And I suppose because of how they look with the, the you know, metal bars, they can be seen as a little bit of a prison cell. But actually, they're intended to be a really, really, really nice space. Now, you can get so many different options with crates. So you can see I've got a metal crate here. I've got quite a lot of different metal ones around the house. Um, the ones that are underneath furniture are my um, just plain black crates. And the ones that generally are out and, and seen are the colourful ones. So I've got a light blue and I've got a nice metallic blue one in one of the other rooms as well. Um, just because I like the look of those. Um, you can get a soft crate. And I've got a soft crate behind me just to give you an idea of what they look like if you haven't seen one before. Now, the soft crate literally does what it says on the tin. It is soft. It is made out of canvas rather than um, solid metal. You will have a frame on the inside, so this frame all around here. Somewhere, this particular one um, changes in the middle, but somewhere along the line, there'll be something that maybe unhooks or clips or, you know, un unhinges somewhere, and then the whole thing will collapse down and become sort of about that thick with a carry handle so you can move it about, which is quite handy. They are marginally lighter than your average metal crate, um, depending on the size of it. 
um, and but what is quite nice about it is you've got a lot of mesh but also some covered in parts so it's a little bit darker inside it can provide a little bit more protection from the elements if you're outside of the crate somewhere or you've got the doors open um, it can also help some dogs that don't like other dogs kind of staring at them and giving them eye contact when they're in the crate obviously if they're in an open crate like this any dog passing can see in really clearly something like this it might be enough with the mesh that that you know it's a bit harder for dogs to make the eye contact and they might feel a little bit safer in there okay um, what I would say though the only downside really of a soft crate is that they are not very um, escape proof at all uh, dogs can easily scrape the mesh and get a claw through they can they're generally used with zips so I have known dogs to be able to actually get a, a, a nose in if it's not quite closed properly or get a claw through and undo the zip and then once they can get a nose through it it then will open up I mean you can there's normally two zips you could put a little miniature padlock or something in there couldn't you or a carabiner um, but they're not escape proof if you've got a dog that's likely to scrap or chew um, then this probably isn't what I would go for immediately. I probably wouldn't crate train with one of these. I would use a proper crate, but that's mainly because you want the door to be something you can open and close quite easily rather than zipping up, unzipping. It <laughs> takes a little bit of time. But for going out for the day, or if you're going to um, maybe a, a workshop with your dog, something like that, and you want somewhere for them to go just to chill out, this can be a really, really good idea. And they've come a long way. This one's quite an old one now. This one was Cassie's. <laughs> so I think this is about 15 years old and it's still going strong. Um, but the newer ones, you've got ones with carry handles on them. They've got extra windows, you know, you, you can put them up, put them down, um, curtains and bits and pieces. So they, they, you know, you can get some real different ones now. So that's what a soft crate looks like. You can get um, puppy pens. And so I'm just going to show you a picture of our puppy pen. And with the puppy pen, as you can see, um, my particular one is a big hexagonal one. You can get slightly smaller versions that look similar. You can get bigger. They generally come with a zip in base and a zip on top. So you can choose to have the base there or not. If you're going to use it outside on grass, you might choose to take the base out and you've just got grass underneath. Really handy with puppies for um, toilet training. Um, and the top tends to be um, a silver sheet so you've got a bit of reflection going on with the sun again i tend to take these away if we for example if we go away i'm going in the caravan and it's going to be warm i will take that and i can then set it up in the shade of the caravan while we're setting it up and i can pop the dogs in there rather than them being in a hot car they're then somewhere in the shade they've got breeze coming through they've got the silver sheet reflecting the sun if, if it comes round um, and it's just a bit more comfortable for them and, and there's loads of room as well because it's a lot bigger than, than we need for these two the material um, puppy pens, if you're going to use it, if you want to use a puppy pen for a bigger dog or a bigger breed puppy, so one that maybe has got a bit more strength to them, they might move around a little bit more, just be aware that they, they can move, the puppy pens can move. And they can actually move with small dogs as well. Um, I do know someone that's got a lot of small dogs and <laughs> I ran a little fun agility competition a few years ago and um, they'd, they'd put their dogs in the pen to run one dog and I looked round because I could hear a bit of, bit of you know, dog kerfuffle going on and I looked round and the puppy pen had gone to its side and was currently rolling <laughs> where the dogs were pushing it along between them um, so that you know any size dog they're not going to be foolproof um, but certainly with a bigger breed they are more likely to be able to maybe bump it along jump out the top um, move it roll it things like that so just be a little bit aware of that um, but the pens can be really handy to use um, if you just want a quick fix because they tend to fold down themselves and go into a, like a carry bag what's the matter with you um, and so they're a really handy fix to just suddenly pop up if you're taking your dog to visit someone and you just want somewhere to pop them you can pop them in it's there you've got a base ready um, and in they go they have two doors on them normally as well so you know you can sort of set it up wherever it feels right for you open the door close it it's up to you how you use it um, you can also get a metal version of a puppy pen um, you can get a couple of different types some of them it's several metal panels that are hinged together um, and you can kind of move the panels into slightly different shapes but generally the whole thing is as one and you either have a door that you can step through or it's a door within the wall intended so you open it the dogs can get in and out but you don't get in 
you're not having the food no um the other way is um individual panels and uh, you know they get different heights of these they tend to be a little bit thicker a little bit more robust um and you can literally set them up then however you want you can have it pretty much any shape you can have smaller or as big as you want you can open it right up so i could literally have it starting there come out and then close it there and i can actually make it a bigger pen than if it was completely enclosed yeah because if i don't need that back wall i might as well make it bigger um they generally have a door a little gate that will open again so you can step in step out um they can be a little bit better if you've got again strong dogs active dogs um and you, you need somewhere for them what we tend to do when we get a puppy is in our lounge we will actually set up um our metal puppy pen um, in a nice long rectangle we'll put a dog bed down one end we put um, a small soft crate in there so they've got somewhere they can go in uh, we put toys we put different things for textures all sorts of bits and pieces down but we do use the puppy pair we put puppy pads down if needed um, if you've got a bigger breed and you're not sure if they're going to try and jump out you could then just pop something over the top so they're not as likely to try and jump in and out but they can be really nice and secure and they can be really really good um, used like a crate but as a bigger version you can even put a crate in there if you wanted to um, so they've got the crate um, as a bed and then you've got the pen as a little area for them to come out in okay so then once you've decided on what type of crate um, there are other things that you can do as well with them so with my metal crates um, say I have them around the house you wouldn't know I had them um, here is a picture now of what my crate setup looks like with the covers and so with covers um, I try and get ones that are likely to match my decor of my house and so it blends in much more neatly and tidily it also means if I take the crates out with me somewhere I can pop the covers on my dogs are then enclosed they've got their own space I can open up the windows for um, ventilation if I need to they tend to have zips on them so you can have a section open but everything else is still fixed to the crate so you can open the doors without having to take the whole thing off obviously it can be a little bit more fiddly than just setting up a soft crate but if you're doing something for a long period of time or you're going to, you want to use it for longer so like i say mine are up all the time it's it can stay on and it looks really nice um, you can get them made now so you can get them in whatever style you want um, you can get different sizes, you can get reflective ones for if you're using a crate outside um, or you can just use a blanket, <laughs> you know, blankets work just as well if that's the sort of thing you want um, just to go over the crate. Just be aware some dogs, if they are a bit playful, um, whether it's a puppy or an adult dog, can pull the, uh, the crate through the bars from the inside and then chew it, shred it, you know, basically make a bit of a mess of it maybe get a tooth claw caught maybe get a claw caught so just be aware of that um i'm confident my dogs aren't going to do that because i teach them not to from an early age um so i would be happy to put a blanket over the top but i would probably make it quite a heavy duty blanket um so that it's not likely to kind of dip into the crate and be um, tempting <laughs> so yeah so there's a, quite a few different styles of crate you've got to think about that where you're going to put it you know what's and what's going to fit where um and uh and have a look at the so many different styles it's it's amazing how many styles you can get now and not only that you can actually get furniture that has a crate built into it um so you can get um loads of places now actually that sell furniture actually do furniture like a cupboard perhaps and when you open the door it's there's a crate in there um other times you've got maybe um like a, a, a dining table or not a dining table a coffee table that goes to the end of your sofa and actually the door itself is made up of very thin pieces of wood um like a crate so that your dog literally you open it up dog can get in there's a nice bed in there it's all nicely painted and when the door shuts you've got the grill there so that they've got air and light etc etc um so you can actually get made to measure furniture with your dog's crate already incorporated or a crate can be put in there either way um so when we our first caravan we actually took the kitchen completely out and my husband really really cleverly designed a whole new kitchen so that where one corner of it was we took out actually took out the oven 
because we knew we're on holiday we're probably gonna get you know take away or use the microwave um so we took the oven out and we actually then could put slide in a crate there and my dogs loved it they thought it was great that their crate could fit in there and then we could still use the caravan space as much as we normally did without a crate kind of being in the way Um, so, you know, you look up, look up different different styles of crates because you can actually have the benefit of the crate, but it, it blends in beautifully. So it actually looks really, really nice and it's really, really secure as well. OK, um, so, yeah, so different crates, see what works for you. So where are we going to position our crate? Now, if it's going somewhere, Merlin, if it's going somewhere purely for um, temporary measure, so for example, the crate here, this is literally for um, Ivy the hen to stay in at the moment. So it's been up for about a week. Um, she's not going to be in it for a huge amount longer. So it's just in my lounge. It's kind of in the way, um, you know, it stands out a little bit, but it's not forever. So it's not the end of the world. However, the crate that stays up all the time, um, that is somewhere that's not going to be in the way. Um, I've put it at the end of the sofa, it's behind a coffee table. Um, we actually use the top of it to store things on. Um, so, you know, that works out really nicely. But consider where you're going to want it to be. You don't really want to be tripping over it. You don't want people walking into it. So just putting it somewhere where it's going to fit in well. You want it to be somewhere ideally where people are going to spend time in the same room. If you are going to want your dog to have some time in their crate or puppy pen and you've put it in the back room that no one ever goes in, then you know your dog's not going to be overly happy about wanting to be in there. Um, ideally, you want it in a room that's used quite a lot. So my lounge is probably my busiest room aside from the kitchen. So one of those two rooms would be ideal because that way then once I'm sitting down or if I'm working, the crate is in the same room and so the dog gets to see me so we're not worrying about causing any separation issues straight away um you're disgusting <laughs> you don't need chicken food no let's close that again or ivy or ivy can't get into her own crate um yes so I've lost my train of thought now. Thank you, Merlin. Honestly, honestly, animals. Um, so positioning, yeah, positioning where you're going to put it. Um, so ideally, you want to be able to, you know, be quite close to the crate while you're doing your own thing um, and have it somewhere that, that's going to be, you know, quite nice. If you're in that room, it's probably going to be a nice temperature. You're probably going to have, you know, good lighting at some point or another. If you stick them in the conservatory, then it might be dark, it might be cold, it might be hot. Um, so you want it to be comfortable. So somewhere where there's going to be people or a person throughout the day on and off, doesn't have to be permanently. Um, consider where there are drafts. So I have a chimney here. Now chickens, chickens and ducks um, are fine with it getting colder. That's what, you know, they've got the feathers, they've got the, uh, the body temperature, um, thermostats, they know how to control that. So they're fine with a draft. But if I had a puppy in winter, I would be very, very cautious about having that draft there. <laughs> Sorry, man's now behind the crate. Um, here you go, darling. Oh, you want to go in? There you go. You have to come round it, though, don't you? Yeah? You know how it works. I be you're the wrong side. Come round. Good girl. Now you can go in, can't you? Um, so consider that. If I did want to put it here, I might just make sure there was a cover on this side to stop breezes getting in, or I might actually put something in front of the fireplace just to stop the breeze getting in, um, so we're not getting chilliness. Um, also consider where the crate's going with regards to noise. So if you have it right next to the window, if you have it right next to um, a door, again, next to a chimney, then there might be more chance of there being louder noises happening that might either startle your dog or keep them awake when you want them to have a nap. Um, you know, if you're using the crate to help with fireworks or other noise issues, thunder, things like that, being right next to a window or a door or a chimney um, is likely to make the noises much louder for your dog. And so therefore then they're not gonna wanna get in the crate Um, it's not going to become the nice safe den that we want it to be because 
they may have had the experience that when they've gone in there there's been louder noises than when they're out of there um, so consider where you're going to put it you know you might think oh there's a really lovely space in front of the radiator under the window but actually is the radiator going to make it too hot is under the window going to be too close to the window that, that, that noises are going to be heard better um, you know is it going to be better if actually you maybe move the furniture a little bit and put it further into the room you know so just think about it from your dog's perspective and the reason you're using a crate in the first place okay yeah men's got stuck behind the crate you're gonna have to back up buddy and yeah i can't help you you put yourself there go back um so then we've got all of the different things um all of the different aspects of where it's going to go and why you're going to use it you need to consider the size as well um, even if your dog is only going to be going in there you know for brief periods of a few minutes ideally a crate should fit the dog in the respect that they can walk in and stand they can turn around which Merlin can't do at the moment keep going Merlin you can do it keep going and they can lay down if they're going in there and they're standing sort of like this or they go to lay down and they you know their paws are like this because they're at the end of the crate then it's too small yeah even if the next size up crate <laughs> yep even if the next size up crate is another 10 quid 15 quid more it will make the difference yep if you're going to be using it it's going to make all of the difference and i recommend getting the next size up because you're going to use it loads if you're getting a crate with your dog as a puppy they're going to grow okay so consider even the small dogs are going to grow you still need it to fit them so get a crate that's going to fit the size of the dog that they're going to be um otherwise you'll end up having to get another crate later on when they are adults he's worked it out he's turned himself around well done merlin um so yeah so size of crate does make quite a difference because again you want it to be comfortable for your dog you want them to want to get in by the same token it needs to be not massively massive um, if you've got a really 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 young Vimarana puppy now and you get a crate now that's going to be the size of your dog when they're fully grown it's going to be really big for them at the moment it's going to be too much space there so you could get the right size crate for when they're older but maybe board off part of it put something there um, you might have the crate as a pen and actually then have a smaller um, crate or bed or something inside it for them because if it's too big it feels like it's its own room then it's not providing the small enclosed safe den for them which it should be um, it's just going to be having like another room so make it um, a nice fit for them okay um, so yeah so make sure that the size fits them a lot of places um, pet stores I know it's really hard at the moment but a lot of pet stores will let you take your dog in um, and and try a crate out see for the size um, you know you might not be buying it from them but you can certainly let them see if it works for them um we have crates i have crates at, at training all the time um i can always tell you what size crates i've got if you you know see a particular one and you want to compare um compared to the size of my dogs thank you ivy um oh she's found the treats little monkey honestly honestly you have animals eh they're all naughty um and go from there and so then the next thing we need to do is the training itself Right, crate training. So I've just adjusted the camera because you don't need to see me, but you do want to see what the crates are doing now. Um, so with crate training, if you haven't, hang on a minute. Yes, we know that, but it's now charging. Um, if you already have a dog, the dog that you want to crate train, then try to set up the crate when you first get it with your dog in the same room so they can see what you're doing they can see what's making sounds and to get them comfortable with it because if they suddenly come into the room and it's brand new there's a high chance they're going to think oh, okay that's a bit weird what's that smells different looks weird um, but if they see you putting it together and putting it up then um, it can help them to just relax a little bit more about something new something i forgot to mention earlier with regards to when i mentioned the soft crate folds down nowadays most crates fold down as well so i have to keep pressing the button because my phone keeps giving me messages even though my phone is now charging i don't know why it keeps telling me that it might switch off because it won't because it's charging um so they do fold down this one folds down this one's got two doors on it uh, which is really handy and they fold down with the sides kind of 
um, you, you lift up the top and move the side in and they fold in and then the crate itself the sides kind of go like that and then fold in on itself and you have a little carry handle so they do fold down so you can store them away somewhere you can put them in the back of the car easily enough um, and it just makes them even easier to use then you haven't got the great big crate you've got to find a home for um, so yeah they are quite handy so the crate training get it set up if you haven't got your new dog yet so you're going to bring a puppy home or a rescue dog home or a rehome um, then have your crate set up ready okay get it where you want it to have a look see what works do you want to put a cover on it do you want to put a blanket on it get everything you need for it so for example you can get um, crate bowls that can go in there so ivy has got two in here she's got one with her water in and the other one's got her food in by having them off the ground and attached to the side of the crate they are less likely to knock them over it's not completely written in stone but they're less <gasps> well you keep letting yourself stuck they're less likely yeah um and i mean these this one is a one for dogs the other one is um, a bird one you can get really easy ones that literally just hook onto the side and the little bowl sits in it they work just as well um, you can't get those for soft crates, um, which you have to kind of work around other things. Well, you put yourself there. Let me move this out a bit. You're silly. Here you go. Turn around. Um, so get them set up. Decide what you're going to do. They generally come with a, uh, a plastic base in there because the intention is that uh, you want to capture anything from falling out because obviously it's mesh uh, metal and also if you've got uh, a puppy that you're puppy training the metal uh, the plastic base is is easy to wash down so you'll have a plastic base so decide what to put in there you're going to put your dog's bed are you going to put blankets in there you want to make it nice and cozy for them um, i generally have um, a blanket on the bottom and then i put a bed or two in there so that there's some sides as well but you can actually when you're getting covers made you can get like a bolster cushion to go around the base <laughs> of the crate merlin come round Come on, come out. What's this? Because all you can hear is you make that silly noise. Come on, quick. There's my good boy. There you go. Honestly. Silly boy, ain't you? You silly boy. You're not having all her stuff. Um, so make it really cosy for them. Whether they're watching you or whether they haven't come to you yet. Have it so that it's really, really, really nice space. Now, I wanted to show you crate training. But I think Merlin is going to just get in the crate because the crate happens to be here. So it does make it even easier. Now, when you've got the crate up, the first thing you can do is actually have the crate doors pegged open. I meant to bring a peg and I forgot. So literally have the doors open, wedge your shoe under it, use an literal peg to peg part of the door with part of the um, crate itself. You want it so the door isn't going to close on itself. And that way your dog can investigate they can go in they can have a sniff around they can come back out you can put a couple of toys in there if you want you can put chew in there and um, if you have got two doors have them both open because they can literally walk through if they want to if you're having a game and you're playing with a toy you can chuck the toy near it and then chuck the toy in and literally just let them come in and out as they want to if they want to put themselves in there for a nap brilliant they can you can give them their meals in there. So initially you might just have the bowl next to it and then slightly in so they can lean and then have it in the crate so they get into the crate. But at first you just want it to be, this is a place that you can go in if you want to go in and see how they get on. If they're really, really nervous, um, then we know they're not quite ready. But if they're going in quite freely, then that's a really, really good sign. Um, what we then want to do is once they've had maybe a couple of days or maybe a week of just getting used to it being there, particularly if you've already got a dog and you've brought this in, um, give them a bit of time. With puppies, you might be able to do this quite quickly. I know. You're going to go in now and it's going to be weird because you're going to do it straight away. But what you then want to do is sit down with your dog and have uh, six treats, at least six treats um to work with your dog okay and we're going to do lots of little mini sessions of this it might be that you do several in a day it might be you do one a day and it takes a little bit longer because you're you know you need more days to do it but what you're going to do is you're going to take your six treats <laughs> you're going to open the door and make sure it's pegged open you're going to chuck a treat in so your dog can go in and let them come out let them come out don't shut the door yet don't do anything don't praise them for coming out Chuck another treat in, let your dog go in. Let me just lower that down a little bit. Merlin, I've actually got to get him out because he's eating the food. Let him come here, you naughty thing. Good boy. Good boy. 
Good lad. Yeah, that was a good one. Oh, hello, Rippers. She says, I can do this too. You can, can't you? Smell him. Come out now, please. Oi. Good boy. You can get that, you naughty thing. Rippers. Good girl. It's so tempting sometimes at this point to just shut the crate on them. But that's not what we want to do. Good girl. And so you let them come out every time. We want to build up this trust. Good girl, you coming out? Good girl. I'm just going to close it so that Merlin can't help himself to chicken food. Um, oh, yes, was that? Oh, hello, Ivy. You missed it. You missed a hell. Oh, dear. Um, so then what you're going to do, you're going to do that a few times. We've got a few sessions of that. Here you go. Ivy, come here, baby. Ivy, no, don't eat the dog treats. Weirdo. Right, Ivy, come here, look, look what I've got. Look, what's this? That's too big. Look, Ivy. Ivy's now trying to eat a <laughs> heart-shaped treat. <laughs> Probably something she shouldn't be eating. Um, I'll show you with Ivy in a second. Um, so, you want to try and do that a few times, as much as you can, because you want your dog to get used to going in, coming out, going in, coming out, building up that trust. Then what you're going to do is think, actually, do you know what? They go in, they get the treat, they, they sniff about a bit, they go in and out during the day on their own, they quite they take a toy in sometimes. You know, if you get into this stage, then you want to go for it. If it might take a little bit longer, that's fine. Do a few more sessions of just the six, opening and closing. Ivy, no, Merlin, we don't need you interfering. Ivy, can you pay attention, darling? Right, Merlin, come over here. Good. Ripley. Ivy, what's this? <gasps> oh. So then what we're going to do is, Merlin, we're going to do the six. Let them come in, come out again. So I'll show you with Ivy. There you go. There you go. Good girl in the crate. What a good girl, like eh, Rippers? Merlin. Good girl. In you get. So I'm not doing anything. I'm not closing it. I just want to go in and out. I'm not making a big fuss when she comes out because she's not really doing anything. So she's getting the reward for going in. She has nothing for coming out. And then the sixth one, I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to open it again. And I'm going to make no fuss whatsoever. No fuss. Most animals will come out just because the door's opened. Yep. Because they're assuming we want them to come out. So they'll come out. Although Ivy isn't. <laughs> So if she comes out and she wasn't traumatised, as you saw there, she just sort of turned around and went, oh, you shut the door. Okay. Ivy, out you come, baby. Good girly. Then we can, for goodness sake, Merlin, then we can do it again. Okay, so throw it in. Assuming that they're all right, throw it in. And do the same thing again. Shut the door for a second, open it up. So all we're doing is showing them the door will shut, but then it will open it. Excuse me, thief. Then it will open again. Merlin, what's this, baby? What's this? Good girl, Rippers. Merlin, go there. Ivy, get in your crate. <laughs> and gradually, we'll close it for a few seconds. So notice she's not bothered. So I can open the door again. She really couldn't care less. There's a good girl. I'm not going to praise her for coming out. Otherwise, they want to come out to get the praise. Okay? So then I might try it for a little bit longer. So she had a few seconds. I might try I mean, I would probably close it, close it at this stage. But I'll give her a little bit longer. She's now sniffing about. She's checking what's on the floor. Looking around. But she's not stressed. And I'll open it again. Just because that's what we do. Right. Who wants the bowl? Come then. Bad boy Merlin, aren't you? Hey. Eh? And so that might be what you do over a week. That might take to get to that stage. It might take a lot less time. If you can do lots and lots of tiny sessions. But you don't want to be moving it on. Until your dog is happy to go in. And they're very chilled. If you find that they go in, you start to shut the door, they're all right for a split second, but when you try and have it shut for maybe five or six seconds, they start going, mm, or they're you know, pouring the side of the crate or something like that, you don't want to then open the door, because they will learn very, very quickly, so Ripley's in that crate now, they learn very, very quickly that if they want to come out, they make a fuss. And then we tend to get into the pattern of, oh my God, they're making a fuss, quick, open the door, dog stress, the neighbours might complain, whatever it is. Instead, if they're making a bit of a fuss and you've only had the door shut for a few seconds, 
interrupt somehow. So it could be that you just, <clears throat> it could be, or, or that you just literally go, nothing. Nothing's making Merlin listen, because he's a naughty boy, aren't you, Merlin? So let's try that, see if that interrupts him. Merlin, good boy, there you go, good lad. And then one, when they are thinking about the noise that you've just made and go, oh, what was that? So they're quiet, they're not physically doing anything. That's the time that you, you just quietly open the door and let them come out. You don't say anything. You don't say, oh, come on then, you're a good dog. Because again, they're going to be wanting to come out to get the interaction. You want them to realise that the only place they get anything is when they're in the crate. That makes it better, all right? If they think, well, I get a treat for going in, but when I come out, I get a treat and praise and I get out, well, then they're going to want to come out. Yeah, just because they're getting that reward. So, yeah, so interrupt before you open if they're making a fuss. So don't move on in time until you can close the door for those few seconds and that they're nice and calm, or they might even just sort of have carry on sniffing about and then you open the door for them. You could then go from a couple of seconds to try maybe 10 seconds and then maybe if they're okay, you could try 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 40, go up to a minute, two minutes, three minutes, gradually build it up okay you want to stay next to the crate while you're doing this as well so don't put them in and think oh i've got 20 seconds i'll quickly go and get my drink and come back stay here set yourself up on a little chair on the floor whatever works for you next to the crate that way you can do all the opening and closing and you've not got to worry about your dog being anxious that you've left them okay just put this up a little bit higher so you can see me properly hello merlin um yeah, I know. Um, you want to build the time up before you start putting in distance of yourself. Um, but again, you're not interacting with your, your dog anyway when they're in there. So when you do start moving away eventually, they're not missing out on anything because you were just sitting there anyway. So while they're in there, you could be checking your text, you could be reading a book, you could be watching the telly, whatever it might be. But you're just there. The presence is there. Okay. You might then stop, come back to it another day, start off with the six close the door on the last one, open it again, you know, let them out, see if they want to go in again. You'll start finding that they just, when you set up, they actually get in and wait for the treat because they know it's coming, okay, which is really good. Um, if you find that they go in for their dinners and they actually start, you know, you bring the bowl out and they actually start putting themselves in, um, you could then also put the bowl down and if you've already started closing the door, you could maybe close it while they're eating. That way they get used to the door shutting and the lock going on, they eat their food, and then you open the door for them again. You could then try having it closed for, you know, 10 seconds after they're finished, 20 seconds, a minute, gradually build it up <laughs> like that. I know that was a bus. There you go. Thank you, Merlin. Um, and gradually building it up like that. So these are all lovely. These are all in like the very, very early stages. There could be lots of things that need to be changed. And that's why I didn't want you eating it all. Yeah. Um, that can be, um, this is where you just need to be starting from. I don't know, Merlin. You're not going back in. Come on. Um, but then there's more channels that you might need to go to. This is just getting you started. You may then find that that's enough. That's all you need to do. Your dog's happy to go in and you can start closing it. They go in for a nap. You close it while they're napping. They wake up um, and they go, oh, I need to come out now. And you go, oh, do you want to go to the loo? Let's open the door. Let me go to the toilet. And actually they then come and go back in by themselves. That's great. You can put them in there with a toy to play with. You can put them in there with um, something like a, a Kong with food inside or an interactive toy, a snuffle mat. You can put them in there um, with, uh, you know, if they have a chew to, to chew, something like that. You don't then straight away leave them. You might start finding that actually they're happy in there for half an hour. So actually then you could move your chair a bit further away and a bit further away. And then you're eventually, you're across, Merlin wants to go in the crate. <laughs> and then eventually perhaps you're on the sofa or on a dining chair or something like that. And they get used to it, building up the time, building up your distance, and then gradually you get to the point where you go out of sight, come back in. Remember when you come back into sight, don't make a big fuss. Just come in, get on with what you're doing. You want your dog to see that when they can't get be with you or they can't get out of the room with you, they're not missing out on anything because nothing's happening. When you come back in, you open the crate door, don't make a big fuss. Otherwise they think, oh, I need to get out because something's happening and I'm missing it. You want them to think, Oh, okay, they've gone out the room. I'll just have a nap. No problem at all. Yeah? Um, so, yeah, so these are your initial stages. 
get started with those if you need more help let me know and i can obviously guide you through it because there could be so many reasons why a dog might need extra help it could be you know differences between puppies and adults um you know i've i've done crate training with dogs before that used to be kept in a crate in their previous home um and it was used as a kind of a punishment and they were in there all the time so we've actually had to change the idea of what the crate is for and actually now they're fine with crates they're great but it's taken a long process to get them comfortable again um so there's there's tons of different things that you might need to be doing with it merlin thank you um so yeah so get going with that there's quite a lot for you to take in quite a lot of stages there um start off any questions ask me and then when you get to the point where you think well we're doing everything you've said we're not too sure our dog's not sure about the crate still pop me a message through um, on the comments in the teachable app and uh, and i will get back to you and give you some help okay um so yeah have a little try with that and let me know how you're getting on and uh, and good luck <laughs>